The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Judeans, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the 12, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Please be seated. So I, I have to say, I that collect that we read this, the very first one, the collect of the day, I always use that when people come up and ask you, are you born again? And I go, oh yeah, we are. It says it right here. We were reborn. <laughs> Yep, we are all born again. So this is the Sunday that Jesus steps into his role as an intentional transition specialist. Yeah, we have a, a, at least one of them here as well. <laughs> um, all transitions begin with one moment of change. Some might even be before and after moments. Those are the big ones but they can be big life changes or they can be small life changes too. In Jesus and the disciples' case, it was death on a cross. That feels pretty big. Jesus gave up his spirit. He let go. A change is but a moment in time. And that moment is always followed by some kind of loss or grief. And loss and grief take time and attention, courage and questions, love and, and just a little bit of hope. Transitions require us to go deeper, to dwell in the understory for a while. So let me share a poem with you to help set the stage this morning. This poem is entitled Psalm, and you'll understand why at the very end of the poem. Lord, where there are creatures in the understory, snails with whirled backs and silver boots, 
Trails beetles weave in the grass. Black rivers of ants. Unbound ladybugs opening their wings, spotted veils in flame. Untamed choirs. Well, we don't have a choir today. <laughs> Truly untamed today. Untamed choirs of banjo-colored crickets and stained glass cicadas. Lord, how shall we count the snakes and frogs and moss? How shall we love the hidden and the small? Mushrooms beneath leaves constructing their death domes in silence. Their silken gills in mycelial threads, cap scales and patches their warts and pores. And the buried bulbs that will bloom in spring, pregnant with flower and leaf. Sing, prepare for my radiance. Prepare for the pageantry of my inevitable surprise. There these are the queendoms, the spines and the horns. They clustered hearts beating beneath our feet. Lord, though the earth is locked in irons of ice and snow, not so much anymore, but not so long ago, there are angels in the undergrowth. Praise them. Angels in the undergrowth. I would tell you that is a perfect image of what the Celtic people call a thin place, a place where mystery and just a little bit of faith can astonish us and make us look again. All it takes is angels in the undergrowth. This morning, Thomas is among those angels. Thomas may be the one that is asking for proof, but I promise you every single person in the room is wide-eyed and in their own worlds of astonishment and disbelief in their own understories. They're all living in the same understory of transition, surrounded by angels, one foot locked in that iron of ice and snow and the other anticipating the pageantry of their inevitable surprise, the beauty of a new spring, a new witness to what Jesus has in store for them and us. Oh yes, we're amongst those two. And wherever we stand within the steps of this seasonal choreography, the poet invites us to think small, to love the hidden, and listen to the hearts beating beneath our feet. Easter is the season of experiencing the reality of resurrection, the greatest transition I can think of, although Moses had a few good ones, too, that helped Jesus, I think. What the disciples are doing in our gospel this morning is stepping into the process of saying goodbye to what they thought they had known and into a thin place that will feel like a wilderness for a little while. You are all saying Goodbye this morning to your pastor, Reed. You are sending him off on a grand adventure. And none of you, even Reed, knows who he will be when he returns. A grand surprise. My wish for Reed is that he experiences many small resurrection moments. Perhaps he'll trip over them. Perhaps they'll splash cold water in his face. Perhaps he will find them under rocks and deep in the finery of his own understory. And Reed 
is sending you all and me on a great adventure too. And you may have plenty of doubts about what the next three months will bring. And I will tell you though, that we best not twiddle our thumbs during these months. No, we are now the buried bulbs that will be blooming throughout the coming summer. We are pregnant with flower and leaf. And during the sabbatical season, we will learn to sing a new song and prepare for the radiance of resurrection that will happen during these months to come, and definitely upon Reed's return. You see, transitions may begin with a goodbye, but they end in a new beginning. There will be some wilderness in the between time, but it is all about preparing for the new beginning, whatever shape it takes in us and in him. I can guarantee that we'll all be surprised by it. So let me close with a, a poem that I've just discovered recently um, by Beth Sarah Wright in her book called Dignity, Seven Strategies for Creating authentic community. And she began it with this poem called Look Again. A new way of being, of thinking. At last a lens to dream a little, a new way of seeing. Look again. Gather up the courage, be vulnerable, be hopeful. Swallow your fear. It only takes one change to grow in capacity. Expand your diaphragm of vulnerability and exhale a new thought. No guilt, no shame, no condemnation. Look again, I ask. Look again. Thomas looked again, and his response was, my Lord and my God. Recognition is the first step in every resurrection life. Amen.